Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I think this verse is fascinating that it, well, it admonishes us to faith, that without faith, we can't please God. Faith is God's way. He has called us now to live, not by what we see with our human eyes, but with the eyes of our heart, to, to live by faith, not by sight, as it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. So he's saying, look, faith is what pleases God. The life you live by faith, by what you see with your heart, you believe, and you act on. Without it, you can't please God. This is God's way now. This side of glory, God's way for our lives is a faith path. Then, I think it's fascinating, he says, anyone who comes to him must primarily believe that he exists and then secondarily that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Believe that he exists. That seems so primal. Surely as Christians, we... We're far beyond believing that God exists. But you know what? We're, we're never far beyond that first step. And this verse captures it for us. He's saying anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. And sometimes I know in my life, I have to just, to calibrate my faith, I have to start again from that place. I have to lift my hands, my heart, say, God, you are true. I believe you exist. I believe you are here with me, starting right back. Because listen, the winds of this world are strong and it's everything that we see, that we taste, that we touch. That temporal system dictates everything we invest in, in this life. And so we have to recalibrate. We have to stand and say, Lord, we believe you exist. We believe you're here and, and start to, uh, come to God in that faith expression really afresh every day the same day we're told in Luke we have to take up our cross every day to follow Jesus we can never grow wise uh, and, and start thinking we're too good for those first principles remember in Revelation 2 1 to 5 Jesus calls the church back to their starting place he said, how far you've fallen, return to what you did at first. Revelation 2, 1 to 5. So we can never get beyond or get too good for those childlike expressions of faith. God, I know you exist. And then we, you know, we walk in it and we pursue God. And then believing that he does reward those of us that pursue him earnestly. It says in Jeremiah 29, 13, he will seek me and he will find me when he seeks me with all his heart. God does reward when you press in and you pursue him. Now, just a segue to this, uh, you know, how we invest in the temporal. In 1 Corinthians 3, uh, Paul speaks to us about how we build our lives, our lives of faith. He says there's a foundation laid. 1 Corinthians 3.11, no one should lay another one other than the one that's laid, which is Jesus Christ. But then verses 12 to 15, he talks about how we build. How do we build on that foundation of faith in Jesus Christ? Do we build just with, with flimsy things he refers to, you know, straw and, and things that just get burned up? Or do we build with gold and materials that really last? And he says, listen everyone's work's going to get tested by fire. He said, he, a very interesting verse, verse 15, he says, you know, you might be saved, saved as of fire. This isn't really about salvation. It's about how you're building your life of faith. And I'll leave you with this. I was just thinking today, you know, I invest a lot of my time and energy in building my temporal life here. Things you can see and touch, car, house, education, clothing, um, but what is the structure that I've built in my kingdom, my faith life? How's that looking? I, I wonder. When God comes and reveals the unseen and he shows my work, my faith work for what it really is, I wonder what that structure looks like today. Have I, have I been building that? 
We're told in Matthew 6, verses 4, 6, and 18, that our Father sees what is unseen, and He rewards us. On that great day, on the final day, we're going to see what we built here on earth, but we're going to see a structure of a faith construct that we built in our lives of faith here. Things unseen and unvalued by the world. Things that you've done by faith and built by faith and sacrificed for in the name of Jesus Christ. That is all building a structure that will show itself on that final day. How are you investing? Are you investing in your faith portfolio, in your faith house, in your faith kingdom? Are you investing in the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus? That work is seen by God and will be rewarded by God. God bless you.